Welcome back, my beer-loving friends from all over the world. Thank you for showing up. We've got a special beer here today. Kind of special in the sense that a friend of mine has been telling me about this beer for a long time. He says, if you ever get a chance to find it, go ahead and try it. Now, we had our little men's weekend, I guess you'd say, out in eastern North Carolina. We're, while we're looking at food uh, in the grocery store there in Greenville, South Carolina, of course, we're going to be looking for beer, too. We found this beer. Very special beer. It's one style that I love immensely. It's called a Vienna Lager. We're going to get into that one coming up shortly. We're going to find out what makes it tick. And we're going to do it on... So are you ready for our beer today? I know I am. I've actually had this because we you know, had it in Greenville and it didn't disappoint. This is the Devil's Backbone Vienna Lager. I love a Vienna Lager. I got to tell you, one of my favorite styles, when I moved into the house here, I had gone to a brewery and one of the first things they had in October was a Vienna Lager. Oh, my goodness, I do love them. They have the most amazing flavor. They have the most amazing mouthfeel. If you ever can get one, get one. And believe it or not, and I could be wrong about this, so you can correct me in the comments. That's perfectly fine. But you don't find many Vienna Lagers around. And I think I've done some uh, reviews that I've done in the past year, but... One of the ones that I really like, and I, I kind of use it as an example, is going to be the Dos Equis Ambar, right? The Dos Equis Ambar is kind of a lager style. Well, look, the Germans went down there and in Mexico, and they started up brewing, and they kind of use their Vienna lager style, and uh, Ambar was one of the styles there. So Vienna lager kind of found its place there. But here we've got the Devil's Backbone. It's from Lexington, Virginia. Wonderful little town. I've been to Lexington before. Again, let's see what we have here. Uh, I did a little research on it. They're Lexington and Williamsburg. I believe this will be the Lexington one. Now, Tim had been telling me about this beer for quite a while. He says, you like that style? you got to go try it. Okay, Tim, as soon as I can find it, well, we actually did. We were in a grocery store there in Greenville, found it on the shelf, we put it, and we also got a couple of other ones that I'm going to be reviewing fairly shortly. But this one I felt was going to be really special, so I brought two of them back. Yes, one today, and maybe later on, who knows? Now, I'm not going to go through the beer through history. There's a lot of history on Vienna Lager that I think it'd be well worth you looking up. Again, Vienna Lager is a style that kind of fluctuated a little bit. And we've learned a little bit about the Vienna style lager before, whenever we're talking about some of the darker styles of beer. Maybe the pale ales have kind of moved it out because darker styles were very prevalent. But in this case, Vienna Lager is a style that has stayed with us. And a lot of craft brewers here in America are starting to embrace that style. Austria, uh, Bohemia, you know, you've got uh, Munich, you've got all those nice, beautiful styles that take advantage of that wonderful caramel malt flavor. A lot of those noble hops. And in fact, and I'll get this in the beer specs, this actually uses, let's see, what is it? Uh, Northern Brewer, if I'm not mistaken, and Sots, which I think is very special because it does lend a little bit more to the credibility of that style of beer. Now, without further delay, we are going to go ahead and crack into it. We're not, again, we're not going to do our beer through history. It's a Vienna Lager style. If you've never had a Vienna Lager style, I do suggest you try it. You're going to get a lot of great malty flavors. I've had this, so I know what it tastes like. You're also going to pick up some other fruity flavors in there, too, which we're going to explore. Now, let's go ahead and get this cracking. I didn't know if I had a little bit of that hiss in there, but anyhow, it did hiss. It wasn't extremely effervescent. Now, I like to pour these, as you know, it's my little tumbler glass. I'm not really a 
going to be picky about what I what I pour into it. This is what I normally would pour it into. And I'm going to pour more or less to the side here, but I'm going to try because it does have some carbonation to it. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it slightly and then I'm going to get it some get it to be glass proud if I can as much as possible. Yeah. Ah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Now it does, does smell just like Munich. Now remember, we judge our beers or we review our beers on the five categories of the Beer Judge Certification Program. We're going to do the aroma, the appearance, the taste. Naturally, we want to do taste. The mouthfeel, okay? And then the overall impression. Now the overall impression is, is going to be very important because if I tell you to go find it, you're going to want to look for it. Now, let's see about the aroma first. I can absolutely smell the malt in this, and I can smell the hops. It smells very much like you would have some of the Munich beers there. I think we reviewed a lot of the Oktoberfest beers. We've noted that they are very malty. We know that they've got some good hop flavor to them. This one is going to be along that style, and I believe if you've... If you've ever had a Vienna lager, you're going to be able to taste that malt presence, that malt first mouthfeel. So, aroma, it's got the malt, it's got the hops. I don't smell any, like, fruitiness. I'm not smelling any of that. I'm smelling basically a traditional Bohemian, Austrian, uh, Munich, I, oh, I, I'm smelling a lot of that natural smell like you would associate with those styles of beer. Well, naturally, that's what you want. For an American beer, though, I mean, to have that presence, to have that, that smell just is warming. Now, we're going to look at the appearance. Uh, right now, I don't have much of the Brussels lace. What I do have is a wonderfully... Brown, golden, I'm dropping something here. Wonderfully brown, golden beer here. Hopefully you can see all that. It is, I'm going to say, you know, conservatively SRM, somewhere in the 15 or 16 range. I am bad with SRM colors, so I'm going to be totally off on this one. It is gin clear, as I look at it here. Very clear without any haze whatsoever and it's cold it's also still bubbling up you've got a lot of the carbonation still held in solution there wonderful color just i mean it's inviting and it really does lend itself to that vienna lager style now for the taste let's see what it tastes like Yes, absolutely. Actually, I'm getting a little bit of an apple taste to it. Kind of an apple, maybe a red apple. Malty, toasty, biscuity. Take apple and take a biscuit later on. The apple is right there at the front. Whenever you first start drinking it and the carbonation comes forward, you're going to taste that apple taste. You're going to taste that red apple, kind of like a Washington State apple, maybe a green. And then you start getting the toastiness. You start getting the toasty bread, maybe a pumpernickel. And then you start getting a caramel flavor. Right now I'm tasting caramel. That definitely sends your taste buds on a wonderful adventure. You've got a fruit, you've got a bread, You've got a candy, you've got a you know, sugar. I'm not tasting a lot of the hot punch to it. A little bit of sourness, which could be, of course, the hops right there on that sour uh, bit there. Yes, absolutely. Apple, biscuity, toasty, toasty biscuit, and then caramel on the back end with that hop, slight hop bite to it. Yeah, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Now, the one thing you need to know about a Vienna lager, sometimes it can be dry. Well, it's kind of, it's a lager, and it's from that area anyway. 
so it's going to have a little bit more of a dry flavor to it. It's not like you're going to sit there and just, you know, kind of, you're going to, you're going to taste a lot of that sugary, sweet candy taste to it. Remember I said it's going to have a toffee taste. It's got the taste of toffee, not the mouthfeel of toffee. It's not quite like a Bavarian, uh, like a, like an Oktoberfest or some other Bavarian beer, Einger, Paul Enner, uh, such and such. But it is going to have a lot of that characteristic that you're, that you're, that you know, whenever you drink those beers, it just doesn't have the water. Now, water makes a big difference. Different flavor profile. Yes, still wonderful and dry. That's what I look for when I look for a Vienna lager. I look for it to be dry. Believe it or not, Dos Equis Ambar to me has that dryness a little bit sweeter but still has that dryness now overall impression come on it's a vienna lager it's a wonderful beer you can drink it during the summer even though it's a darker style of beer it's not like a light pilsner or it's not like a light lager you can drink it because it's actually clean you still get the malt flavor to it Whereby in a lot of modern, lighter beers, you're not going to get that. And that's why I think this beer or Vienna Lager, you can, you can have it with a party if you particularly wanted to. I can't find this down here, but I can say that if I were to bring this to a, to a cookout or something, it would get gone very quickly. So how do I rate this? I rate this very high on a scale to 1 to 10. I would say it's about a seven and a half to an eight. And the only reason why I say this is because I've had a good <laughs> Vienna lager before and it ranks on up there. It's something that's affordable, approachable that is, and you can bring it to a party. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to be thought of very well because it's not your run of the mill stuff. It is going to be a fantastic beer that is going to stand on its own. You can have it with just about anything. Hamburgers. Mexican, uh, you can have it with almost any type of food. I, in fact, I would take it to a cookout and have it with some of your favorite barbecue items. Now, that being said, we're going to get into the beer specs and correct my, <laughs> my bad assessment of what's in the beer. We're going to do that right now on the beer specs. Devil's Backbone Vienna Lager A crisp, moderately carbonated American Vienna Lager, making it a popular choice for both casual beer drinkers and craft beer enthusiasts alike. It's a combination of tradition and craftsmanship and has earned it numerous awards and a loyal following, cementing its place as a standout in the world of lagers. With toasted malt, caramel, and other subtle floral notes, has a flavor of caramel, toffee, biscuit with mild bitterness, smooth with moderate carbonation, finishes crisp and clean, style American Vienna Lager, alcohol by volume 5.2%, international bittering units 18, color amber, malts Vienna, Pilsner, and dark Munich malts, hops, Northern Brewer and Sots. Well, folks, there you go. That's our review today of the Devil's Backbone Vienna Lager from Lexington or Williamsburg, Virginia. Again, if you're in Virginia or anywhere where they sell this, I don't really know exactly what their distribution is. Go get you some. This stuff is wonderful. I believe what I paid for it was about... 11 or $12 a six pack. It's not the cheapest beer in the world. Okay. We get that. But for, but for the taste and the quality, I mean, you take this to a party and you're going to be the man of the hour. I guarantee you that again, thank you very much for being here today. Remember subscribe, ring that notification bell, get notified the next time I have a video out give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us some love. We always like knowing that you enjoy our videos and 
it helps the channel out. So do, definitely do that for me. As well, uh, tell your friends, pass it along. Say, listen, we got a beer channel over here. This crazy guy over here from South Carolina, he does all these interesting types of beer. Some of the beers you may or may not have ever heard of. And remember, if you've got a beer that you want me to make a review on, list it down in the comments, okay? Just say, hey, listen, have you seen this one? Have you tried this one? I'll be more than happy to go and see if I can find that beer. How about that? Now, uh, as I always say, uh, take a look in Amazon. We've got the beer review logbook. I don't make any money off of it. I'm not affiliated with them. I've got no buy-in to them. But this is an amazing little book right here. It's a pocket size. How about that? I've got a pocket this time. Pocket size. You can carry it with you. Put your pen there. If you're on a beer adventure, write your beer adventure there. Okay? I've got a little story about that one too. Actually, I'm at the end of the video here. I might put in some extra content, so stay with us until the end. We went out to Eastern North Carolina, and we went to a couple of beer locations there. Anyhow, if you're in the upstate of South Carolina, definitely pick up one of these. This is the, the South Carolina Upstate Ale Trail. Now, South Carolina and North Carolina, along with Georgia and Florida, are becoming hot spots for brewing. We've got so many breweries around here. It, it, you, it, it would take you a lifetime just to go to all of them. I mean, quite honestly. The Upstate Ale Trail, however, is a great guide in the upstate for your local breweries. Now, these are kind of old. I need to get a new one. I think the last one is 2023. Some of the breweries have gone out of business. The best thing to do is to find out. You know, if you go to one of the breweries that are still open, hey, is this one still open? We're doing a little tour. They'll tell you. They know what breweries are still open or not. Love to find this one on PDF. Total Wine, if you're listening, make this on PDF. This is one of the best little books you'll ever see. This is the Total Wine Total Guide to Beer. This is kind of old. It's 12 years old, but it is my, my super guide to anything having to do with any type of beer, for that matter. Lovely little book. And now we've got the Beer Score Sheet from the Beer Judge Certification Program. Really cool little document. I've got a link down in the description. You take it, you print it out, you take it with you. You fold it up, put it in your pocket. Next time you're looking for beer take this with you and write down your experiences here it's got the five categories that we usually use along the side here too it's got a little bit of a guide on what you're tasting and if you happen to taste an off flavor this will give you a little bit of an idea of what you're tasting and what the problem is remember take it print it out fold it up take it with you write your experiences down and then pop it back into your beer review logbook now remember subscribe right ring that notification bell get notified the next time we have a video <clears throat> tell your friends about us pass the word along we've got a great guy up here in the upstate of south carolina that's just loving all these beers out in the middle of everywhere uh, especially in america if you've got a beer you want me to try Leave it down in the comments. I want to do some more beer reviews, uh, as many as possible. And I need some beers to try. So, that being said, again, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up. Give us some, some love here, right? Helps us grow the channel. And, as we say always, Prost! Chin chin! Can pie! Salud! Slancha! And of course, from America, cheers. Mm. Let me some Vienna lager. Peace, love, and beer. And now, a little footage that we took while we were at the Duck Rabbit Brewery in Farmville, North Carolina. So we are here at Duck Rabbit. And your name? Grayson. Gra Grayson? Grayson. We got Grayson here. And hey, hey. And we are trying some of the great beers. I had one of the Doppelbox. A buddy of mine had a Vienna Lager, and you had the what? What did you have, Larry? What did I have? 
You had to be on a logger too, okay. And there's Tim. You've seen Tim before. I'll do it short for this one. And uh, we're just having fun here out the Duck Rabbit. If you ever get a chance to go to Duck Rabbit in Farmville, North Carolina, do definitely go. They got some amazing beers: Imperial Stout, Milk Stout, Doppelbach. Uh, they, got, they have an Imperial. Well, they have a Baltic Porter that is just unreal. And of course, they got the Old Rabbit's Foot. It's an Imperial Stout. It, it I, I've had this before. It's just, it's it's amazing. You got to try it. But anyway, get out here. We are here at the Duck Rabbit Brewery, and uh, there you go.